Namo Vishnu Padaya Krishna Prishthaya Bhutale Shri Mate Bhakti Vedanta Shaminiti Namine Namaste Sarsati Deve Gauravani Pracharine Nirvishesha Shunyavadi Pashtachade Shatarine Shri Krishna Chaitanya Prabhu Nityananda Shri Advaita Gadadhar Shiva Shadi Gaur Bhaktarinda Hare Krishna Hare Krishna 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 Hare 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 Rama Hare Rama 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 Hare Hare In the Bhagavad Gita Mami Vangsho Jiva Bhuta Jiva Loke Jiva Bhuta Sanatana Manashastan Indriyani Bhaktistani Karshati the Mami Vangsha, Lord Krishna says, all of these living beings are my Angshas. Angsha means part. The, from this we can understand that there's a part, and part implies there must be a whole. So Krishna is that supreme whole. And the living beings are all parts of Krishna, Anksha. This contradicts the theory that there's no difference between the living beings and God. I'm God, you're God, everyone is God. Uh, this is all contrary to Bhagavad Gita. The living beings, as living beings, we may have the qualities of God, but that doesn't mean that we're God. I'm just, I'm an American, and that Mr. Biden is American, so that doesn't make me President of the United States. Right, he's the chief American. I'm one of the many subordinate Americans. In the Upanishads, it said, Nityo Nityanam, Chaitanas Chaitanam. The personality of Godhead is the supreme eternal amongst uh, the innumerable eternals. Nitya is singular and Nityanam is plural. Among all the plural Eternals, there's one singular eternal. Chaitanas Chaitananam, of all the conscious living beings, there's one supremely conscious living being. Then what's the difference? If we're all Nitya, if we're all Chaitana, why do you say there's a difference? Eko Bahunam Yovitati Kama. The one is supplying the needs of the many. Uh, I can't say I'm supplying all the food for the elephants and the ants. I can't say that I'm supplying the sunlight or the rain. That's the business of the singular nitya, the singular chaitanya, the supreme personality of Godhead. So when we speak of Krishna, Krishna is that supreme personality of Godhead. And he speaks as the personality of Godhead, Bhagavan, in the Bhagavad Gita. Uh, all these living beings are my eternal parts. Mama uh, Vangsho, Jiva Bhuta, Jiva Loke, Sanatan. We're all eternal. And we're all eternally part of Krishna. In the, yes. But manashastan indriyani prakritistani karshati. But we're struggling. Uh, how are we struggling? We're struggling with our minds and our senses. The senses are all demanding. 
the eye says, I want to see something nice. The ear says, I want to hear some, this kind of music, that kind of music. The tongue says, give me this kind of food, give me that kind of food. The, uh, all the senses are tugging, I want something, I want something. Prahlad Maharaj says it's like a man who has five wives, and one wife is pulling, come on, let's enjoy, another wife is, come on, let's enjoy, another wife is pulling, five different directions, come on, let's enjoy, poor man. So, in this way, the senses are all pulling. Uh, and the center of the senses is the mind. And the mind is always causing trouble. It also gets pulled by the senses, and then the mind teams up with the senses. Come on, you want this, don't you? Come on, you can't be happy without that. And the mind, uh, sometimes it's mm, full of happiness, sometimes it's full of distress. What is it? The mind can make a heaven of hell and a hell of heaven. Uh, this is the business of the uh, mind. The, among the miseries that the living beings undergo in this world are miseries caused by our own minds. Uh, of course, people who are clinically mad, their minds cause them trouble. But those of us who are supposed to be sane, we're also caused trouble by our minds. The mind is, in the Bhagavad Gita, the best friend of the living entity and also the worst enemy. Uh, the, when the mind is controlled, uddhareda atman atmanam atmanam avasari, atmaiva yatmano bandhur atmaiva ripuratmana. When the mind is controlled, it's our friend. And when it's uncontrolled, we're living with our worst enemy. And so generally, mm, people don't even try to control their minds. Uh, even sometimes it's said, just let your mind go, follow your mind, follow your heart. Uh, and then the, we're following our heart all over the universe. And from one lifetime to the next, the, we develop this desire, that desire, and we have to pursue it from one life to the next life to the next life. Uh, prakriti sthani, karshati. Um, the, as fragmental parts and parcels of the Supreme Lord, the living entities also have fragmental portions of Krishna's qualities. Uh, the drop of water has the same qualities as the ocean of water. Uh, but the ocean has it in unlimited quantity, vast quantity, and the drop in just a tiny quantity. So we have the qualities of God, and but only in a small, uh, fragmental uh, portion. Among those qualities, one is independence. Krishna is absolutely independent. We have a little independence also, tiny independence. By misuse of that independence, one becomes conditioned, a conditioned soul. And by proper use of independence, one's always liberated. Conditioned means we're subject to, to the conditions of material nature. I, I'm not free. I'm not free. I'm uh, bound. What is that? Uh, in the mode of goodness, I'm bound by a feeling of happiness. Sukha sangena badnati jnana sangena chanaka. Person in the mode of goodness thinks, yes, I'm. I have knowledge. Uh, I, I have happiness. And so he remains uh, a philosopher or a, a teacher or a philanthropist life after life. 
Sukha Sun gain and Rajo Ragatmakam Bidhi Krishna Sangha Samud Bhavan Tad Nibinati Kontiya Karma Sangena Dehina. And in the mode of passion, one is bound by desires. Uh, Rajo Ragatmakam Bidhi Trishna. Trishna means thirst. He's thirsty for sense gratification. I want more. I want more. This is passion. And you know, we see people are driven more. There, I saw a, a billboard in Bombay. Uh, it said, it was for some financial company. It said, now that you've made your first uh, million, uh, what do you want to do? What next? Uh, maybe it said crores. Anyway, million. Uh, now that you've made your first million, what do you want next? And the answer, of course, was the second million. Tripyanti neha kripana. We're never satisfied. We always want more. Uh, so, uh, Trishna Sangha Samud Bhavam. We become bound. We become slaves to our passions. Uh, Shakespeare wrote, give me that man that is not passion's slave. Uh, we're slaves to our passions. Uh, and then, tamastva uh, jnana jam vidhi, then tamastva jnana jam mohanam sarvadehina, pramada lasya nidra bhistanya the, in the mode of ignorance, one is bound by madness, by lethargy, uh, pramada, alasyanidravis. So, and these modes all mix up in different quantities. No one's in pure ignorance, pure passion, pure goodness, there's some, they mix up like colors. You have three primary colors, and from those colors, you get so many other colors. The colors are mixing up. So in our hearts, these were infected by, you know, name the proportion, 60% passion and 20% ignorance and 20% goodness, or, you know, just spin the wheel and change the numbers but we're all bound by these qualities and we're thinking we're independent uh, this is called uh, maya or illusion uh, under these mm, influence of the modes of nature we're struggling uh, we're struggling and that's the history where is money i'm struggling where is money? I'm struggling uh, with this. I'm struggling with that. I'm struggling and struggling. This is, I'm struggling with war. I'm struggling with, there's no end. In the liberated state, the living being is freed from this material condition and he's under the engagement of transcendental service to the Lord. In his conditioned life, he's dominated by the material modes of nature, and he forgets the transcendental loving service of the Lord. As a result, he has to struggle very hard to maintain his existence in the material world. So that's the position. We're either going to be struggling or we'll be engaged in Krishna's service. Krishna's service is our natural happy condition. That's the business. If we're whole, if we're the part, then we're meant to serve the whole. My hand is the part, so it's meant to serve the whole body. It's not meant to be an independent entity. Yes, I'm a hand, freedom for hands. Yeah, yeah down with the body. No, 
the hand is happy when it serves the whole body. The hmm, clock hand has meaning when it's in the whole clock. Independently, it's useless. So the natural happy position of the living being is to be engaged in Krishna's service. Alternatively, if we try to be independent, uh, we'll only have the illusion of independence, but in fact, we'll be engaged in the service of Maya or the material energy. Hmm? That will be our position. We'll be serving our friends, we'll be serving our country, we'll be serving our boss, we'll be serving our family, we'll be serving our senses, we'll be serving our dogs or other pets. We'll be serving. No one can escape from service. But now the service is hmm, unsatisfying. Uh, I'm serving my country, I'm serving so many things, but I'm still not satisfied. Or, yes, I'm satisfied, but then the service will end. I'm very happy serving my family, serving my, my country, and serving humanity. But then, death comes, get out, service finished. Even now this Ukraine-Russia war is going on. So the Ukrainians are serving their country, fighting against the Russians. And the Russians think that it's to their advantage to fight against the Ukrainians. But in the next life, I may switch. Uh, if I'm on the front lines, say, as a Ukrainian fighting against the Russians, I'm thinking, where are those Russians, those Russians, those Russians? And the result, the next life, I may take birth as a Russian. And the same thing, you know, the sides can switch. Uh, Or from the Indian side, the Indians are thinking of the Chinese, the Chinese are thinking of the Indians. Next life, switch. So, the service in this world will be temporary. Uh, Krishna says, Dukali Mashashvata. Material world is a place where there's so many miseries. Uh, what are those miseries? Um, birth is miserable right from the from the get go. It's not like it's a, a wonder. Of course, we all celebrate birthdays, and but to be born is miserable. <laughs> uh, and then to die is miserable. And in between, to get old is miserable. No doctors are, are researching, how can we get old faster? <laughs> old is miserable. And uh, disease, miserable. And no one can avoid these miseries. As long as, so Krishna therefore says that this world is Dukalia. It's a, a miserable place. We can try to make it a wonderful, wonderful place. It's a kind of self-delusion or a bluff. Yes, I'm happy. But then he goes home and he's not happy. You know, She's on screen. She's happy, happy. And she goes, goes home and takes some darvan or something and, and tries to... Be not so miserable. Welcome. So, Dukalia. Then someone says, no, you're looking at the glass half empty. I look at it half full. The world is a beautiful place. Then Krishna says, Ashashvatam. All right, you think it's a beautiful place. It's so nice. You're happy here. Now get out, because we can't stay. We have a happy home. 
we have that wonderful family, a good job, nice house, everything. Now get out. Mamu Petya Puna Janma to Kali and Mashashvatam. Napnuvanti Mahatmana Sangsidhim Paramamrita. Krishna says that those who are uh, broad minded Mahatma uh, don't stay here. They don't try to make a permanent settlement in a place where permanence is not to be had. Uh, they come back to me, Mahamupetya. I'm back to Krishna. So this Krishna consciousness movement is meant for that, for reviving our eternal happy consciousness. As soon as one is Krishna conscious, he's in his natural position, so he'll be happy. Uh, and that happiness is eternal. Brahma Sokyam Tvananta. So uh, the, it's only intelligent, therefore, to be engaged in Krishna consciousness. Uh, what other kind? Show me some other consciousness. No, this is better. Uh, this is better. Philanthropic consciousness, nationalistic consciousness, family consciousness. Knowledge, there are those ganis. Their platform is looking for knowledge, but that's all right. So, what will you do with your knowledge? I have knowledge. Great. Knowledge without use is useless. It's uh, tautological, but true. Uh, Knowledge has to result in something. I have to do something. If I know the, the room's on fire, I have to run. If I know that there's money here, I have to grab it. So, Bahunam Janmanamante Genaman, Mam Prabhajita. When one actually comes to the platform of perfect knowledge, one understands that Krishna is everything. He is the complete whole. I'm the part. Let me serve Krishna. Janmanam Bhonam Janmanam Ante Gyanavan. When one actually has knowledge, when he's not just looking, but he, he's achieved knowledge, then he understands Krishna is everything. Vasudeva Sarvamiti. And he surrenders to Krishna. So this chanting Hare Krishna allows us to surrender to Krishna, enables us to develop the pure consciousness in which we understand our eternal relationship with Krishna, then we can act in that relationship. And then one naturally develops one's love for Krishna. It's not mechanical, oh, I have to surrender. <laughs> And then after I surrender, you'll cut my head off. Not like that. But one, the result of that, this surrender is that one enters a loving relationship with Krishna. The nature of that relationship is described in Srimad Bhagavatam, how Krishna has loving dealings with all his devotees. Uh -huh. So much uh, we can read about that, these eternal transcendental dealings of love, uh, Krishna's loving, uh, all the living entities in a reciprocal way. As they love him, he loves them. As we love Krishna, we can exchange love with Krishna. So all of these things can be realized by chanting the Hare Krishna Maha Mantra uh, by reading books like Bhagavad Gita as it is, Srimad Bhagavatam, by associating with devotees of Krishna. So the whole science, how to be Krishna conscious, is 
taught here. It's not something sentimental or imaginary. Uh, how one can be Krishna conscious, even in this, in, while living in this world with our whatever duties. Bhagavad Gita spoke into Arjun. Arjun wasn't a, a monk or a, a renunciant. He was a military man, family man. But he learned how to be Krishna conscious, or Krishna instructed him how to be Krishna conscious 24 hours a day. So that we can learn under proper guidance. And let us take the opportunity that will make our human life successful. We only have this life for a short time. Durlabha manava janma tadapi adruma martinam. So let us. Uh, make the most of it hmm. and be happy in this life and in the next life go back to God and yeah let's see if there's some questions yes 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 where do you go um <clears throat> Uh, during your um, <clears throat> lecture, you indicated that uh, uh, you know cause and effect, action, reaction, karmic reactions. So my question is: um, Is everything that happens to us and everything we do a result of previous activities, or are some of our activities the beginning of a new chain of events? Everything are some of our activities the beginning of new a new chain of events, or are they all uh, results of previous events? Mm -hmm. Both my present activities are the result of my past activities. I've taken birth as an American, an Indian, a uh, German, an Italian, an African, as a result of my past activities. And now, because I'm an American, or I'm an Indian, or I'm this, I'm that, I'm acting in a certain way. I'm speaking English. I'm not speaking German or French or Hindi. Uh, as a result of my previous activities. Or I'm taking this particular occupation, or I'm taking this, uh, marrying this person, or whatever it is, because of my past activities. And so now I have my present activities, they're generating the future activities. So it becomes a very complicated business. One uh, action becomes the cause of the next action, next action, next action. And it goes on and on and on, an endless chain of action and reaction. And we're thinking we're free. Uh, we're acting because we're forced to act by material nature. Uh, prakrite kriyamanani gunai karmani sarvasha aham karabhimudhatma kartaha miti manyate We're acting under the pressure of material nature and by false ego we're thinking I'm independent. Not a fact. We're all bound up and thinking ourselves free. That's our position. But ma me be ye prapadyante maya etam taranti. One can get free from that chain of action and reaction by surrender to Krishna. That is, by using our tiny independence properly, wisely. Let me uh, turn toward Krishna. Then we get free from maya and this karmic chain. Is that okay? That's a great answer, Maharaj. <clears throat> so if, uh, if we take the philosophy that, you know, everything's uh, just a reaction. So, you know, everything I do, there are no, I don't make any mistakes. It's all just, you know, reactions to other actions, then it, it can kind of turn into like a irresponsible mentality, couldn't it? 
If we think that we're just carrying out the results of our karma, it can become irresponsible. We're all irresponsible to begin with because we've left our natural position. Our real responsibility is not my responsibility to my country, my family, my, my this, my that. My eternal responsibility is to be engaged in the service of Krishna. So everyone in this material world is irresponsible. If the hand isn't serving the body, it's irresponsible. Hmm? We're all irresponsible. Hmm? That's the position. Yeah. But uh, if one understands these things, then it's the beginning of knowledge and beginning of freedom. If one has no knowledge, then he'll be on and on foolish. But if one develops knowledge, one can act properly. We see Arjuna is Krishna is explaining these all these topics to Arjuna. Arjuna didn't become irresponsible. He was already irresponsible. Let me leave the battlefield. It was his responsibility to fight. And he wanted to, to leave because he didn't like it. Yeah. At the end of Bhagavad Gita, uh, now I'll, uh, I'll do it. It's my duty. So just the opposite. I don't become irresponsible. I become more responsible. But in the proper consciousness, just to be responsible, a responsible leader of human society is another illusion. But to be responsible and Krishna conscious, that's the real thing. Is that okay? Hmm. Something else? Krishna, Krishna, Hari, Hari. Hare Krishna Prabhu. Hare Krishna. My question is about chanting Harinam. Hmm. It has been recommended that I should chant uh, Hare Krishna Mahamantra every day. Hmm. And uh, I find that it's not uh, mentioned in Bhagavad Gita anywhere. That's or in Bhagavatam or in Chaitanya uh, Charitramita. So, it's, what is the source of this recommendation? You've been recommended to chant Hare Krishna, but you don't find that this recommendation is there in Bhagavatam or Bhagavad Gita. But in the Bhagavad Gita, Satatam Kirta Yanto Maam. Describing the engagements of the great souls, Krishna says, Satatam Kirtanyanto Maam. They're always chanting about me. Yeah, kirtan means chanting, and Maam means Krishna. So it's there in Bhagavad Gita, Satadam Kirti Yanto Maham. Mahamantra you'll find in the Upanishads. Kali Santarana. Kali Santarana Upanishad. There you'll find this Mahamantra. Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna, Krishna Krishna, Hare Hare. Hari Ram, Hari Ram, Ram Ram, Hari Hari. Iti Shodashaka Nam Nam Kali Kolmashanashana. Nata Paratharo Upaya. Swarubhe De Shudrishyate. In the Upanishads it said. Uh, Iti Shodashaka Nam Nam. These 16 names. Kali Kolmashanashana. Destroy all the unwanted effects of Kali Yuga. Na ata parataram na anyat. Uh, Sarvavedeshu drishyate. If you look through all the Vedas, Sarvavedeshu, you won't find anything paratara, anything higher than chanting these 16 names. So we haven't invented this Mahamantra. 
we haven't invented this idea that one should always chant the uh, transcendental sound of Krishna's name. It's coming from Shastra. Is that okay? In the Bhag in Bhagavatam also. Uh, that what is that? Uh, <laughs> Uh, what is that? Last verse. Nama Sankidanam Yasya. Not so many, actually. Etan Nevijmanana, Ichitamakotobiya, Yoginam Nimine Nitam, Hare Nama Kirtanam. That one who wants to be free from all fear should chant Hare Krishna, Hare Nam, um, many places. Yagyaya Sankirtana prior Yajantihi Sumeda and Kaliyup, those who have good brains will, in, will take part in the Hari Kirtan. Oh, many, many places. Harir Nama, Harir Nama, Harir Nama, Eva Kevalam, Kalo Nasjeva, 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 Gatir. It's not that there's no evidence we could fill pages and pages and pages. And okay. Anukirtana, Anu means constant, and every day. Something else? Yeah. Maharaj. Maharaj. Sir. Dandat Pranams. Hare Krishna. Uh, Hare Krishna. Uh, when I see souls getting my reincarnated, when they die, they take another body. Mm. So, so far, what we see in this universe is ants, animals, humans, right? Each one has their own souls. Is it that the number of souls in the entire galaxy or the, the universe is constant? It is just human no, behavior. Galaxy or universe, there may be different numbers of souls. Sometimes it may be trillion, 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 and 10. Sometimes trillion, 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 whatever, and 14. There may be different numbers, but that's only this universe. And there are innumerable universes. So finally, it becomes uncountable how many there are, but there are no new ones being created and no old ones being destroyed. Nitya Shashvatam Puranam Nahanyate Hangyamane Shirite. In the Bhagavad Gita, Krishna says the soul has no beginning and has no end. So it's not that if the population is increasing, then new souls are being created to supply the, the demand. Hmm? There's hmm, constant population. What is the number? Unlimited. Uh, and sometimes you may see more in the human form, sometimes more in the mosquito form, sometimes more in some other form. But there are no living entities ever being created. Therefore, we find the scientists, they can't create any living being. And Krishna says, you can't kill any living being either. The body can be created, body can be destroyed. But the consciousness within the body is eternal. The so atma is eternal. So from that point of view, the population is constant. I think it corroborates uh, Albert Einstein's equation also, like energy mass equivalence. No, I don't know if it does or not. But... <laughs> so, yeah, very nice. You did. <laughs> yeah. Thank you, Maharaj. Hare Krishna. Hare Krishna Prabhu, I'm not sure this question is valid, so uh, my apologies if, so like sp spider stays in its web and uh, taking it inside, so we always feel like uh, everything in the world and the world itself is kind of from Krishna and Krishna is also part of it. Now, 
Uh, Krishna, Krishna is also like I mean among us, every one of us are in this entire world. Now my question is hmm. okay. here there are several religions in this world and so there are also many. some uh, oh. religions. Religions. Religions, yes. Hmm? And there are there are also some sectar in India itself where they are deeply, you know, are spreading there's no God kind of philosophy. No God. Yes. Hmm. So always I used to get that doubt. Why Krishna, like, I mean, uh, why I took birth in this complicated environment? <laughs> when, when he... Like, I mean, uh, why this environment is so complicated? Okay. I have to ask you for a favor. I have a fairly serious hearing deficit. Oh. So, so if you could speak a little slower. Sure. Then I'll, I'll, yeah. I'll decode so, it. Instead of having this many religions, if Krishna would have had just uh, like I mean, one religion and one God, uh, we kind of no need to uh, kind of felt, uh, what is it called, uh, anxious to encounter the other knowledge spread by other people, etc. Why this kind of complicated? Why kind of Krishna has uh, had we, other created, religions? It's not that Krishna has created many religions, we've created many religions. Religion is one, sarva dharman pratyaja mamekam shanamiva. Religion means ultimately surrender to God, to Krishna. Now, that's one religion. But we create another religion, that you, uh, you do this, you do that, you, you be a good person, you, uh, you decry God, you become one with God, you um, perform pious activities to go to heaven, you do this, you do that. Uh, so many religions we've created. And then we say, why has God created so many religions? No, it's, our, it's us. Otherwise, Krishna says, give up all this nonsense, this religion, that religion. Surrender to me. That's sanatana dharma. All these other dharmas are asanat, temporary. But the eternal religion, it's not my church, your church, my mandir, your mosque. The eternal religion is to be internally engaged in the service of the Supreme Personality of God. And that religion is one. Hare Krishna. Hare Krishna. Any one quick question? I will check for others. Okay. So, my next question is, I definitely got that we should not have attachment towards too much of money, materialistic desires, etc. When we are a bachelor, definitely I am able to accept it. I have confidence to accept it. Once we get married and kids, then mind automatically shift towards whether, as you said rightly, right, 500,000 is enough? No, my kid need to go to college in 10 years. No. Whether 1 million is sufficient? I'm not sure. My kid need, may need to go to better college. It's not that I want a better car. I want a better home. To be HK is enough. But practically, in realistic, I find very hard. Specifically, not that's that the need is for me, but for my kids. So the detachment I'm not able to get from the materialistic desire, from my kid's standpoint, how I can achieve that? Mm -hmm. Krishna will take care. I should not worry kind of mindset. So it's very easy to be detached and when we're bachelors, when, we, when we're not married, then when we're married, we have so many responsibilities. So then it's easier to remain unmarried. <laughs> it's too late. <laughs> okay, now that it's too late, then one should engage one's everything for Krishna. Uh, Srila Bhaktivinoda Thakur, a great saint, uh, sings, Manasa deha geha yoki chumur arpilu tuapade nandikishor, in Bangla, in Bengali. Uh, my dear Nandikishor, Krishna, my mind, my body, my home, Whatever I have, I offer at your lotus feet. This is the secret. 
the now I'm thinking my home is for my enjoyment, my wife is for my enjoyment, my children are for my enjoyment, my everything for, for which I'm working, finally, it's for my happiness. Uh, it's all mine, my wife, my children, my home, my money, my Tesla, my iPhone, my this, that. Uh, Krishna says, no, it's mine. Everything belongs to me. Sarva Loka Maheshram, the whole universe belongs to me, or all the universes belong to me. So we're the caretakers. Uh, we're responsible for some family, some whatever responsibilities we have. So I should think I've been given this service by Krishna. Hmm? That the home is actually Krishna's, so I have to use it for Krishna. Everything is Krishna's energy. So that energy, which has come under my responsibility, I should engage in the service of Krishna. The money is not my money, it's Krishna's money, but I have to spend it for this purpose, that purpose, according to my duty. But I have to think that it's Krishna's and that I'm serving Krishna. Uh, then it's all right. Is that okay? Hare Krishna. Hare Krishna. Therefore, Krishna's instructing Arjun. Arjun wasn't a sannyasi, he was a householder. And the householders, it's not that this chanting of Hare Krishna is only for uh, monks, for sannyasis. The householders especially can chant Hare Krishna and in this way become free from all the entanglements that otherwise um, bind us in family life. Is that okay? Hare Krishna Maharaj. Hare Krishna. So, when there are new devotees who are coming to the temple, accepting Krishna consciousness, what are a few things we can tell them they will benefit from chanting because they are already happy with their life, wife, kids, money, family, house. So, what are the triggers that should be there for them chanting? What are the triggers? Because they're already happy with their family, their money, their... No, they're not. <laughs> they're hoping to be happy through family, through money, through so many things. But no one is actually, yes. And if they are, again, Krishna says, it'll all be finished. You're very happy, now get out. So there's no magic formula that I say this and then boing, you know, but we have to speak the message of Krishna. Whatever Krishna has said in Bhagavad Gita, Srimad Bhagavatam, whatever you find, just repeat that. It's uh, transcendental medicine. Gradually it will act. It may not be that on day one, the person will say, oh, I was in illusion, now I understand everything. But if he goes on hearing this transcendental sound, sound of the Maha Mantra, sound of Bhagavad Gita, uh, then gradually he'll, he'll uh, come to his real consciousness. And that's all we have to do, just repeat what we've heard from authentic sources, and it will act. It's all transcendental sound, uh, like an alarm clock, you know, it's ringing, ringing, ringing. Uh, but finally, I have to wake up. So, uh, in that way, we vibrate this transcendental sound. Gradually, people will awaken. Of course, we need some cooperation. They have to be willing to hear. But if they're willing to hear, we're willing to speak. Anything else? Where are we? We're basically in stopping time. We have five minutes more. Then what happens in five minutes?
make a few announcements. Why don't you start announcing now? Okay. I think we've uh, said, oh, no, I, I, I'll give a public service announcement. I just remembered. This is a sort of a future announcement because anyway, we've published a book, Srila Prabhupada's Kirtan Standards. Those who are practicing devotees and regularly uh, interested in Kirtan can take advantage of this book where there are many instructions and it's a future uh, it's advertisement because we don't have copies of the book here yet. Although it's in print, copies are on their way. And when you when it comes, then you're welcome to pick it up and maybe even uh, get yourself a copy, especially those who are uh, regularly performing kirtan, chanting Hare Krishna and uh, doing kirtan will uh, benefit from uh, seeing Prabhupada's instructions on the topic. All right, end of that announcement. And now we hear your announcements. Thank you. Thank you, Maharaj. <laughs> okay, first. Uh, Thank you, Maharaj. 